Salutations, Hatchers! We higher-ups at Grizzco would like to provide you with an update on information. It seems that some of our researchers have found some interesting ancient films surrounding the Salmonoids' ancestors. And we want all of our Hatchers up to date on all Salmonid information as we get it. This never-before-seen information will help you understand what the Salmonid truly are as you shoot them down and collect those power eggs. As you know, the Salmonid are an interesting race of fish-like humanoids that seem to want to get out of the ocean and much more inland. But why is that? At first, you may assume that it's because Inkopolis, which many ancient manuscripts have revealed is built on top of a land once called Japan by an ancient civilization, has many fabulous products not sold anywhere else in the world. <laughs> I suppose these Salmonids don't know anything about Samurai Buyer. Grisco Productions' latest sponsor. This ancient footage we found shows a strange creature using Samurai Buyer to purchase Japan exclusive items from Japan only sites. Apparently, you find the Japan only item you want. Then, Samurai Buyer will purchase it for you and have them ship it to Samurai Buyer, who then in turn ships it to you anywhere in the world. No more does only ships to Japan matter. And it's all thanks to Samurai Buyer. But, come to think of it, Inkopolis may have many amazing shops. But based on what our researchers have found, the Salmonids may be doing this because of instincts instilled in them from their ancient ancestors. So here it is, the life cycle of Salmon, Sans the Id, as translated from six ancient films that date back to long before the Great Turf War. Our estimates date these tomes to be about 12,000 years old. So let's not waste any more time and dive right in. This first tome seems to be explaining the ancient power eggs and how this small creature we presume to be a salmonid ancestor, Salmon, grows. The cycle begins. Salmon life begins in fresh, clean water when a red or a nest of eggs is fertilized. This must be referring to the power eggs. These eggs remain in the gravel throughout the winter, and the embryos develop. Odd, these look mighty similar to the golden power eggs. In the spring, the eggs hatch, and alevins emerge. These are tiny fish with a yolk sac of the egg attached to their belly. Ew. <coughs> Elevens stay close to the red or the nest for a few months until they have consumed all of the yolk, and thus grow in size. These fish emerge from the gravel and are then considered fry. Ah, I see. These are the eggs of the salmonids. But why must they attack the metal islands? Are they in search of clean waters? Perhaps if we continue watching, we will find the reason. Fry swim to the surface of the water, fill up their swim bladders with oxygen, and begin to feed. Oh, this must be the ancestor to the small fry, or small fries are simply younger salmonids. Depending on the species, fry can spend up to a year or more in their natal stream. Upon emerging from the gravel, both pink and chum are already silvery smolts, and head directly to sea. Sockeye fry tend to migrate to a lake, spending one to two years there before migrating to sea. Chinook fry usually spend less than five months in fresh water. Chinook? You mean to say those small fries will eventually be able to fly? While coho fry may spend over a year. This coho fry, may it be the ancestor to the Kohawk salmonid? Interesting. Let's keep watching. The survival of fry is dependent upon high-quality stream habitats. Ah, clean water. Boulders, logs, shade, and access to side channels is important in allowing the fry to hide from predators and prevents them from getting flushed downstream during flood river flows. Hmm, migration. I wonder if this is related to the Salmonids' 70-year migration. Eventually, environmental cues cause fry to begin their migration downstream towards the oceans. At this time, smolting begins, and scales grow as they turn a silvery color. At night, to avoid predators, small fry or developing smolts allow the river to take them tail-first downstream while larger fry swim directly towards the ocean. Estuaries, at the mouth of the river, are crucial to the survival of young smolts. While allowing their bodies to adjust to the new conditions, they feed heavily. 
hoping to ensure survival in the ocean. It seems that the young Salmon, as they were known, would travel to the ocean. But what then of the onslaught we face every day of Salmonoids coming onto land? While some Salmon remain in coastal water, others migrate northward to feeding grounds. Salmon may spend one to seven years in the ocean. Hmm. So it only took seven years to fully mature. Certain species have more flexible life history strategies, while others are more rigid. Coho may spend up to seven years at sea, but typically four. Pink salmon, on the other hand, spend a fixed 18-month time in the ocean. There are so many types of salmon, many more than there are salmonids, that's for sure. Sockeye typically spend two years at sea, and Chinook can spend up to eight years before journeying back to their natal streams to spawn. Such a diverse species. Ah, a subject that you should be familiar with. The Great Migration of the Salmonids is well known. Here is an ancient scroll depicting the Great Migration of the Middle Age. But let's see how their ancient ancestors did it. It is uncertain as to how exactly salmon detect their natal streams, though it is suspected that scents and chemical cues as well as the sun play an important role in their homeward migration. Once the salmon reach fresh water, they stop feeding. Interesting. Now that you mention it, I haven't seen any salmonids go on lunch break. During the course of the journey, their bodies instinctively prepare for spawning. The taxing journey draws energy from their fat storage, muscles, and organs, except for their reproductive organs. Males develop hooked noses or kipe in order to fight for dominance. I wonder how the salmonids evolved to use cookware instead of using their teeth like barbarians. Upon reaching natal streams... Wait a moment. Natal streams? This must be why they head towards the derelict islands. They must have been built on their ancient rivers. Females build nests or reds. These little depressions in the gravel are made by the female by turning on her side and using her tail to dislodge stones or pebbles. Males fight with other males for spawning rights with a female. Even amongst themselves, they are savages. The dominant male will court the female. And upon spawning, they release eggs and milt simultaneously. These eggs will settle into the gravel, and the female will cover the eggs with loose gravel and move upstream in order to prepare another nest. Eventually, both the males and the females die, supplying the river habitat with nutrients and the seeds of the next generation that will someday return to continue this cycle. Their ultimate goal is to die? Ha! I always knew salmonid were quite unintelligent. Some salmon, such as the steelhead, which are actually rainbow trout, <laughs> it's a common misconception, are able to live after they spawn, and some may spawn several times. Interesting. The larger boss steelhead are able to continue after they spawn. This must be due to their robust nature and great fortitude. So, upon viewing these films, our scientists have deducted a possible reason why these salmonids are attacking our land. A theory, if you will. Long ago, when these salmon were but simple legless fish, the geography of this area was very different. But due to erosion and the shifting of the tectonic plates, and the dam we built, what were once their ancient streams used for breeding are now closed, washed away, and polluted. And the reason they so stupidly blunder into our defenses in mass is because they are exhausted from not eating anymore. Plus, all they can think about right now is getting home and breeding. And this is also exactly why they carry so many of these power eggs. Ah, excellent. Well, these have been quite informative. These ancient films have revealed quite a lot about the Salmonid ancestor, and it's information that we can use to better understand and defeat the Salmonid foe. So until next time, Hatchers, splat on! And remember to check out Samurai Buyer with the link below. They are even giving away this amazing Splatoon merch. And giveaway details are also in the description. Now then, Squid Research Lab signing off.